Well, guitar is, is such a beautiful instrument. It, it's got so many characteristics and genre that that I, I really love. And, and I, I, you know, I had the, uh, not through really choice of my own, just by good fortune, uh, particularly what, with my elder brothers, my mother, who was, a, was a, an amateur violinist, uh, to be exposed to so many different kinds of music. By the time I was 15, I, I'd gotten to Miles Davis, but I've been through, not been through, I've been impacted by, uh, classical because I started on piano and then 11 the guitar came at simultaneously with the, with the Mississippi blues which was a total revelation <laughs> for me because I abandoned the piano right away as soon as the guitar came into my hands and then flamenco and then Django Reinhardt and then uh, jazz American jazz and then Miles Davis and Coltrane and that and that and that was it that was it but those, those influences stayed with me because I remember on the, already by 1970, I done, in 1969, yeah, I mean, I was, I was in New York already in January 69 uh, to play with Tony Williams. And of course, as, as great fortune would have it, I ended up being with Miles and playing with Miles and recording with Miles. But I, I, got, I got a two record uh, contract from Alan Douglas, Douglas Records. Uh, and I did an album called Devotion, which, which I was on tour and it was just hacked to pieces, uh, unbeknownst to me and released like that. And, and, and I, was, I was really upset. And I said, well, listen, I got one more record. And if you come into the studio, <laughs> I'm not gonna finish it. So mm -hmm. that was my goals beyond. And I, because, you know, the guitar I started on was acoustic. I didn't even know what electric guitar was 11 years old. So, <laughs> so but the, the, the acoustic guitar I've loved forever. And I wanted just to do an album of acoustic guitar, which was My Goals Beyond, which I did some multi, multi track, double, I mean, double track maximum, some solo. And then there were like two extended pieces with. Um, uh, oh, that was the first time I, I was just starting to get Mahavishnu together. So I had Jerry Goodman on violin on that album. Billy was on that album. Charlie Hayden was on it. Um, Battle Roy, Tabla. I was already into the Indian thing. And that, strangely enough, that record was been sold on I don't know how many times. I've lost count, of course. Um, right. I got I got shut out of every deal. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that that's Alan Douglas for you. Anyway, um, but the guitar <laughs> is such a fantastic instrument. You know how whether it's blues or whether it's, you know like the classical jazz, because of course when I started uh, as a jazz, you know, pretending, you know, to want to be a wannabe jazz player. Um, which was after I heard uh, Django Reinhardt. I must have been about 14 or 15. And, uh, you know, I mean, amazing. And then I discovered the American jazz guitar players, um, in particular, Tal Farlow, I enjoyed. I enjoyed right. the, way, the way he played. He had a swing to his, to his guitar, to his playing. That was really delightful. Uh, but I liked them all. And then, of course, Wes Montgomery came along with his thumb and killed everybody with it, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, in a way, in a way, I mean, he made a fantastic success, but he was so great in the beginning. But I had, I had a feeling he just, he was, I don't know who was producing him, but, he, you know, he ended up doing these kind of uh, movie songs. And I know I grew up with standards, but, but, um, and I'm sure he sold a lot of records, but but I felt he had more more of the jazz spirit than he was putting into the those some of those records, you know. But in any event, I, I got taken maybe because I grew up as a, between the ages of eight and eleven as a piano player. I got taken by the piano and the horns. Well, the, yeah, especially Miles and Coltrane. Of course, Bill Evans came along and just blew me away on piano, but the horn players, they had a thing. And, and I never, 
I, 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 I always wondered why don't they have a guitar player in their bands? You know, <laughs> and what they don't like guitar or what? And uh, but in the end, they Miles got a guitar player in the band. Me, you know? he sure did. Yeah, <laughs> just started it all. I did an interview a series with um, let me see, uh, John Schofield, Mike Stern, um, and Robin Ford, who followed you know you with Miles and all that. We yeah. talked about. We talked nice about players, yeah. Yeah, we all talked. Good yeah, and, and we talked about their experience with Miles and all of that. And of course, everybody brought it back to you or the you know the first guy that you know that showed up and played with played with Miles. So they they all kind of bring it back to your experience and what you brought with Bitches Brew and all that that whole thing. That was, you know, I think I mean every guitar player from my era and so forth and so on knows those records, you know. So yeah, I know. Cool. I, I I just happened to be the right spot at the right time 